Hey, good morning everyone. This is Pastor Bridge Strohecker and welcome to Closer to God episode 49. Today we're starting a new chapter in the Gospel of Mark chapter 11 and we're going to talk about the triumphal entry of Jesus into uh, Jerusalem. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day and this is a day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And Lord, part of our day should always be in your word, where we are allowing you to reveal yourself to us and help us to get a better understanding of you. And that helps us in our personal relationship with you to grow, draw closer to you. And it also teaches us a better way to live our lives. So Lord, give us the guidance and direction we need today from this passage of scripture that we will be discussing in this episode. So Lord, just guide and direct us through the power and inspiration of your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so today is a familiar story. It's usually one that uh, we uh, talk about on Palm Sunday each year during the Lenten season. It's Jesus' triumphal entry. And it's chapter 11 in the Gospel of Mark, starting at verse 1. As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead. Go into that village. Well, excuse me, that village over there, he told them. And as soon as you enter it, you will see a colt tied there that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks what you are doing, just say, the Lord needs it and it will return and will return it soon. So, uh, kind of an unusual request that Jesus is making to the disciples, but he's saying, look, this is what I need you to do, and uh, this is going to be part of today's plan. So what did they do? They pretty much executed the plan. The two, in verse 4 we read, the two disciples left and found the colt standing in the street, tied outside a house. As they were untying it, some bystanders demanded, what are you doing untying that colt? They said what Jesus had told them to say, and they were permitted to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it, and he sat on it. So, not that unusual of an occurrence. You know, maybe these were acquaintances that Jesus had met along the way during his ministry. So when the disciples just you know, identified who needed the colt, these people were like, okay, yeah, that's fine. We know that guy. It's fine. Uh, he can borrow that. We told him, you know, anytime he needs anything, we'll be here to support him in his ministry. So that could have happened. We don't know. We don't know the background of this. So sometimes people think, well, this is kind of weird that they're going and just taking somebody's colt, you know, and they're like, hey, wait, what are you doing? And then they tell him what Jesus said. And, oh, everything's OK. So I know some people have a little difficulty when they read that. But, you know, we have to consider there's a backstory here that we don't know uh, that the Bible doesn't discuss. But it's not an unusual request. And it could be a result of uh, a previous meeting between Jesus and the owners of the cult during uh, some other part in his ministry because as we've read all throughout the gospel of mark uh, crowds followed jesus wherever he went so he met a lot of people along the way and being the lord he knows all of us so you know th this is uh kind of part of the human side of him and pot and also part of the divine side of him where he's saying look this is what you're going to do and this is what's going to happen you know that's the divine side but the human side is you know just tell him look i need this you know, and they'll be fine with it. So uh, not an unusual request, and they went ahead and fulfilled it. So at verse 8, we pick up on what happens next. Uh, Many in the crowd spread their coats on the road ahead of Jesus, and other cut, others cut leafy branches in the fields and spread them along the way. He was in the center of the procession, and the crowds all around him were shouting, Praise God! Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Bless the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Praise God in the highest heaven. So Jesus came to Jerusalem and went into the temple. He looked around carefully at everything, and then he left because it was late in the afternoon. Then he went out to Bethany with the twelve disciples. Okay, so this is Jesus seated on a donkey coming into Jerusalem the people were singing his praises and shouting his praises and exclaiming him to be uh, the 
um, the kingdom of our ancestor David. That's what he is representing here. Uh, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And they're laying garments out on the road ahead of him. This is uh, something that signifies uh, not only the significance of Christ, but also sig signifies him as something of royalty. Uh, and of course, this is probably where some of the controversy of that Holy Week begins because here Jesus is being treated as royalty and he's not uh, the one that is seated on the throne by earthly standards uh, in this territory. So this would have created some controversy in that aspect of things. But, you know, this is something uh, that we know because we know this is Sunday and Friday is going to be a different story. These people are going to change their tune on Friday and turn against Jesus. But for this day, they're praising him and he's making a triumphant entry. And you know what? It's fitting because considering the work he was going to accomplish by the end of this Holy Week, it's it's. Um, it is a triumphant entry for all humankind, for all generations, because of what Jesus did for us at the cross at Calvary. So this is a fitting thing for us to do for him uh, as he's coming in as the triumph, uh, triumphant king, uh, the king of kings, the lord of lords, who's going to defeat sin and death on our behalf. He's going to take our sin debt and our sin penalty and take our place on the cross and be executed and pay our sin debt in full. That's what a, a criminal sentence is, is paying your debt to society. And that's what Jesus was going to do for us, but on a more spiritual and holy scale, one that we as human beings could never, ever attain. So, and this fulfilled prophecy, uh, there was prophecy of one seated on the cult, you know, on a donkey coming in as the king. Uh, this fulfilled prophecy. So, you know, there are people that doubt that Jesus was the Messiah, but this is one of those things that occurred during his ministry that fulfilled prophecy about the Messiah. Now, he's not uh, the Messiah they were looking for because they thought in their minds, this is the guy that's going to overthrow Rome and get us out from under Roman oppression. And we once again can celebrate life in freedom and practice our faith, uh, our Judaism, uh, without interruption or interference from any worldly governments. So this is what they were thinking in their minds. But little did they know, Jesus had a more important battle on mind that he was going to come here and fight for us and win for us at the end of that week. So, you know, it's great that we gave him that triumphant entry. It's unfortunate what happens at the end of the week, but... It was for the benefit of all. And that's what the Lord does. The Lord looks at the entire picture and does what's for the benefit of everyone. Because the Bible tells us he's a just God. He's a loving God. And he cares about everyone. He cares for his creation. He cares for human beings, his children, regardless of what they have done. Nothing separates us from his love. We're the ones that separate ourselves from our spiritual inheritance. Our eternal destiny is determined by our choices and our free will that we utilize in this life. And Jesus was paving the way to reconnect us with God uh, by coming into Jerusalem that week as a triumphant king who was ready to do battle with Satan and win that battle for all time. And that's what this event represents. And uh, that's the way that uh, the Bible is portraying it to us that we have to keep in mind and consider. This guy is our champion. And he will always be. No one will ever take his title from him. He is the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, our Lord and Savior, our precious Jesus Christ. So that's all I have for today. Until next time, remember... Nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. I'll talk to you soon.